Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder. Thank you for being with us all week as we have unpacked these powerful three verses uh, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Jesus looked at oppressed people and said to oppressed people who were carrying tremendous burdens and weights. He says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And God wants to help us carry our burdens. Amen. We can't carry these burdens in life by ourselves. When we're physically tired, when we're psychologically tired, when we, when we are spiritually tired, Christ says, come to me uh, and I will give you rest. I want to talk to you about how God gives us rest from unplucked thorns. Unplucked thorns. Some of you already know where I'm going with this one. Paul says, as he writes to the Christians at Corinth, he gives a, a spiritual autobiography to the Christians at Corinth and tells of an unplucked thorn he had. And that word thorn is not just a little thorn that you get on a rose bush, but it's a spike that he had in his life. It was some physical uh, malady that Paul had. And notice what it says. It says, are because of these surpassing great revelations, Therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord, take it away from me. He prayed three times, Lord, take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. for My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, Paul says, conclusion, therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may be rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And notice what he's delighting in. He's delighting in the weaknesses. He's delighting in the insults. He's delighting in hardships. He's delighting in persecutions. He's delighting in difficulties. Why? Because when he is weak, he is made strong because he's leaning on Christ. Listen, brothers and sisters. Paul prayed about this thorn he had. We don't know what it was. He didn't go into detail. But he had a, a thorn, and he wanted the thorn unplugged. When you get a thorn in your finger, what do you want somebody to do? You want somebody to take a little needle and help unplug it. And he went to God and said, I got a thorn, not in my finger, but I got a thorn in my life. And it is a distraction. It is painful. Would you, God, please unplug the thorn? And he prayed three times, and God said, no, no, no. Three times, God said, Paul said, remove it, remove it, remove it. And God said, no, 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 no. I'm going to give you something better. I'm going to give you grace. I'm going to make you a trophy of my amazing grace so that people see you with that thorn. They say, how is he still functioning with that thorn? And that's what happens when we go to God. God gives us the grace we need to deal with the unplucked thorns of life. Now, how do we deal with an unplugged thorn? Number one, put this down. Look for the good in the unplugged thorn. In other words, as bad as the situation is, and he mentions some, a list of things in verse 10. He mentions, he mentions weaknesses, insults, people insult you, hardships, persecutions, people are out to get you a difficult life. You say, look for the good in it. What? Good in is it. Winston Churchill, who was the Prime Minister of, of England during the dark days of World War II, when World War II was over with, in 1945, uh, he uh, was voted out of office. He just won the war for them, but in 1945, he, was one, he, he lost his Prime Ministership. And his wife said to him, she said, Winston, she said, this is a blessing in disguise. To which Winston Churchill responded, let me tell you, it's a greatly disguised blessing. And when people say to you that this is a blessing in disguise, many times you look at it and say, well, it is a greatly disguised blessing because I don't see any blessing 
and this having this unplugged thorn. But Paul specifies why he sees a blessing in it. He says in verse 9, Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about the weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. God is never closer to us like when we've got an unplugged thorn. So here is, here is the blessing in it, something you can see good in it, and that is the promise of God's grace to help us deal with it. Because in every unplugged thorn situation, come unto me, Jesus says, and I will show you that there is a blessing in it. I cannot think of anything that has ever happened in my life that I cannot, I didn't like it. Sometimes the blessing looked very disguised. But when I waited on God, I saw that there really was a blessing even in that thorn. Even in that thorn. So first of all, look for the good in it. It might not always be noticeable. It might, might always be apparent, but it's there. And in time, you will say, you know what? What I thought was this was something horrible and terrible really worked out for my good. Secondly, do what Paul did. When you have an unplugged thorn, talk to God about it. Now, you don't talk to everybody about your business. Be careful who you tell your business to. I want to talk about a preacher, and, the, and these three preachers were fishing out on the lake, and they decided to have a confessing party. And one of the preachers said, I'll start off the confessing party. He says, he says my problem is, is that um, I like the women too much. I like the women too much. I'll be honest, I like the women too much. And another pre preacher said, my turn. I'll tell you what mine is, I drink too much. Sometimes I get so drunk, if my members could see me, oh, they wouldn't want to hear me again. I drink too much. And the third preacher didn't say anything. And they waited and they said, well, what's your, what's your sin? And he said, well, let me tell you what it is. I gossip too much. And I cannot wait to get back to shore to tell what I just heard about you too. Paul didn't talk to anyone else about his thorn. He talked to God about his thorn. He prayed to God. Notice what it says. He says, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it from me. But he said, my grace is sufficient for you. Which is to say that when God answers prayer, and God did answer his prayer, God does not always have to say yes. No, which is what Paul got, is an answer to prayer. Yes, no, and sometimes wait. When God says no to one thing, it's because God is getting ready to say yes to another thing. God said, no, I'm not removing it, but yes, I'm going to give you the grace that is going to compensate for it so that people will look at you and say, look at Paul, how is he surviving with this unplucked thorn? God said no to Paul. I can think of somebody else God said no to. Jesus. Just like Paul prayed three times that his thorn might be removed, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane before he went to the cross prayed three times that his cup might be removed. The cup, he said, Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, if it be possible, remove this cup from me, this bitter cup. And the cup is a symbol of the crucifixion and suffering that he was going to endure. And Jesus said to his father, just like Paul did three times, God remove the cup. And just like Paul had, in response to his prayer, a no thorn removal answer, Jesus had a no cup removal answer. And you might have a no unemployment right now removal answer. Or you might have a no, I'm not going to deliver you from cancer answer. But if your thorn is unplugged, brothers and sisters, and you've come to Jesus Jesus, if he says no to one thing, he's going to always say yes to another thing. Either Jesus will take it from you or Jesus will keep you in it. You go to him, find the good in it, even though sometimes it may be greatly disguised. Two, go to God and pray about it. Talk to the Lord. And then thirdly, learn to lean. Lean on God. Say, God, Help me, which is what Paul did. He says, he says, my grace, verse 9, he said, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul, for my power is made in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness. 
so that Christ's power may rest on me. So I've got God's power. I've got God's grace. I'm going to learn to lean on Christ. And as a result of leaning on Christ, you would think he would be totally ineffective, but he wrote with a thorn 13 books in the New Testament. He planted churches throughout the ancient world, and he did it with the thorn in his life. And some of you are being so productive, and if people only knew, they don't know your hidden thorn. The thorn that you have not had plucked, they would say, how's it possible? And you would say, because I am a trophy of God's grace. One day I wasn't feeling very well. My stomach was upset. And uh, my wife said to me, I love you. She said, Kevin, uh, go downstairs in the refrigerator, and there's some Pepto-Bismol in the refrigerator. And so, and I went downstairs to get the pepto bismol and she yelled down, don't forget to shake it up. Don't forget to shake it up. She yelled at me, and I was going to do it, but she said, don't forget to shake it up. She says it to me sometimes about, about um, some juice. There might be some orange juice or pineapple juice, and she said, don't forget to shake it up, because a whole lot of the good stuff is at the bottom. Don't forget to shake the pepto bismol up. Do you know what she was saying? When she said it to me, the Holy Ghost came over me and said, oh, I hear a sermon in that. She said, don't forget to shake up the Pepto-Bismol. Do you know why? Because the Pepto-Bismol works better, functions greater when it's been shook up. And guess what God does sometimes in order to make us function better, work better? God will shake us up. But when God is shaking us up, shaking something up in your life, that's because God's getting ready to use you to function at a higher level so that you will be a trophy of God's grace. God bless you real good. Thank you so very much for being with us this entire week with another powerful point to ponder, a word for the weary. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Bless your people and help us during the times we're weary and tired and frustrated to go to you, to trust you. For your yoke fits us, it's easy, and the burdens are light. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we've had a great week, and we're gonna have a greater week next week, but tomorrow is Sunday, and it's Communion Sunday, so I want you to get ready and uh, observe the Lord's Supper with us in your home or wherever you may be, and get your own drink and your own crackers, and we will observe the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in worship tomorrow. The pre-worship experience with Crystal and Tyler begins at uh, 8.30 and uh, not 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, I think. 9 o'clock, yeah, pre-worship at 9 o'clock. Then worship service begins at 9.30. And we're looking at different elements in worship, what happens in worship. Last week, hope you can get the message and get it online. We talked about the benediction. Got another word for you tomorrow. So be with us. Uh, don't forget to invite somebody. Why, the reason it's important to invite people to church is because when they hear the gospel, they connect. They connect with Christ and they connect with church. We had some, some people join this past Sunday. And you can still do evangelism. It's not an option for believers. We're called to do it by inviting people to come and tune in to the worship service. God bless you. I love you so very much. You mean the, so much to me. Thank you so very much for your kind words of encouragement. If there's something you'd like for me to address on Proper Points to Potter, please contact us here at St. Stephen Baptist Church here in Louisville, Kentucky. And as we depart, don't forget what we always say. Stay safe. Social distance. Wear your mask. Stay safe. Stay sane. Get the word. Believe the word. Get it in you. Trust God. And if you can, stay home. Take care. See you tomorrow in church.